Extra Money. Our financial advisor, Elaine Beadley, is here. And today we're focusing on investment fraud, those deals that may seem too good to be true, and in some cases they just are not. Well, Elaine is here to talk more about, first off, the warning signs. What are the warning signs? Right. Well, you know, to remind everybody of Bernie Madoff and, and how large that was. It was the largest financial scam in, in U.S. history. Thousands of investors lost 50 to $65 billion. To give you a little bit of perspective there, Indiana's largest investment fraud was around the same time, Tim Durham, in about 2010, was arrested. $216 million was the losses. So huge difference there, obviously. But how did Bernie do that? Well, obviously, he, he, well, he asked clients to give him money in his own name. He put them in his own bank account. He made up statements to give the clients back. And then when someone wanted their money back, he just paid them out. So his key was money keeps coming in the door from new investors, and he can pay it out as necessary, and as well spend lavishly. But the warning signs then would be an unrealistic investment return. He was telling clients 12% return, which was his average annual return that he was making, because he basically was making it up. So it was too good to be true, basically. And he created this investment club mentality. In other words, exclusive club. And if I ask you to be an investor, you know, you're part of this new group, and everybody wanted to be part of this group making this huge return. And, all, and it was like, you've got to decide now. So you don't have time to think of it if you want to get into this. Now, this went on for some time. Why was he not caught by regulators? Well, that's a great question, too. And I think what happens is he was a well-respected person within the investment industry. He was actually on regulatory committees and served in that way. And the SEC just didn't dig deep enough. In fact, there was another investment analyst, Harry Markoplotz, who ended up writing a book about his experience of running the numbers on this and it never and, and the SEC took him to the SEC twice and they never followed up on it. Now how would investors avoid a scam artist? Are there signs to look for? Yes, absolutely. The first thing is never write your check to the investment advisor themselves. Right. Your money should go into a third party custodian like a Schwab, a Fidelity, a TD Ameritrade, something like that, so that you can check. You get a statement every month and you know where your money is going. The second thing is take your time in evaluating that investment advisor. Make sure that you understand their process and their strategy and how they'll be working, and then check them out. You can go to the SEC website, sec.gov, or FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulatory Association website, and check out that person that you may, may choose to work with. But Bottom line, trust your gut. Yes. Trust your gut. If it sounds too good to be true, just make sure that you avoid those types of situations. Okay. Excellent advice as usual, Elaine. Thank, thank you. you. And for more information, you can check out Elaine's blog. We have a link to it on our website. Just go to uh, the, the WTHR app or right to our website. We've got it there for you at WTHR.com.